What's going on? Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. It's Trip Young Man. We back. You see, you see who we up here with? We got the we got the Little League team, the USC. Now, hold on, show me your shirt because I need them to see it. The Titans. They back. They back with us once again. You see, hold on, man. David Ortiz is on, on the, in the building right here. Y'all better recognize. All right. My, the team is back with us. We got a whole lot of sports to get into today. You know, it's a little jumbled on set, but when we got the Little League kids up here, that's just how we do. We try to squeeze as many of them in as possible. And um, listen, man, you see what we do. You know we out here supporting the kids once again. But um, before we get into that, let me introduce my co-host, Mark the Stat Man Skevich. What's going on? What's going on? Great to be back for another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk with the USC Titans in the building. And uh, before we get started, uh, can each of you uh, just say your name and your position? I know we had you guys on the program before, but for those that don't know these uh, superstars over here, uh, just uh, say your name and position starting with you. Yes. Uh, with the mic my in your name is Sam and I play second base. Pass the mic to David Ortiz, go ahead. Uh, my name is Brian, and I play everything. That's right. That's <laughs> good. And I play left field. Cano or just Robinson? Robinson. Oh, all right, just making sure. <laughs> Go ahead. My name is Julio, and I play third base at shortstop. My name is Alex, and I play at shortstop. All right, and uh, Dave, could you, for those of the fans out there that don't know, could you uh, tell us a little bit, re remind everyone uh, a little bit about the program and how it got started? Sure. Uh, the, the program was started a few years ago with now the, the 14 you guys, which are Bryant and Robinson and Julio and Carlos. And um, we just started growing exponentially. In fact, we've, we've left USC. Um, we've branched out on our own. We grew very quickly. Now we have a 10U division, a 12U division, a 13U division, a 14U division, and a 15U division. And uh, the response to the Facebook and, well, when you win, you get people coming in. And uh, we were very lucky to have a couple of very big wins last year. Uh, we won the WBA for the 12U. The 14U won Triple Crown, and um, that that has just exploded the program. Okay, and now this isn't part of the uh, traditional Little League, is that correct? No, this is travel baseball. Much more competitive. Um, you know, you have to try out. It's not that you're everybody plays, and you know, it's all for fun. This is about winning. This is about you know bringing these kids up, keeping them doing the right thing, but it is about winning. Hello, you play to win the game. <laughs> That's what I say. Now, all right, y'all got, because you play all the positions, we got second base, shortstop, who, who's first base? I'm a last Julio over there. All right, first base, okay, and who's the catcher? Sam Bryant. All right, now, did y'all save a spot for me on the team this year, or y'all can't take Rangers no more? Of course we did. Oh, all right, cool, cool. I just wanted to make sure y'all got a spot for me on the team. Okay, now, next question, okay, because, I, you know what, we spoke when we spoke last, I want to I jump quick back and forth real quick to the pros and then back to you guys, because I know we spoke last year about Robinson Cano, how he left the Yankees, we were a little upset about that. The Yankees are in a bad state right now, I think, still. We got a couple of pieces in the place. But do y'all think we're going to make it back to the playoffs this of year? Of course. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Absolutely. Right. Now, we say that every year as Yankee fans, but is there a time where we have to be, you know, realists and say and think, you know, otherwise do we need to get somebody else in there or what? What do we need to do? We need healthy pitchers. Yeah, yeah right. pitching, pitching is the who, only thing. Okay, so now who's the pitchers here again? Because I know it was like y'all had eight pitchers last year. Okay, we got one, two, three pitchers. Okay, you, oh. you're, the, old, right, you're the oldest. Yeah. How many more years before we can get you to the AAA and then on to the Yankees roster? Because they, they need the help. You know, Tanaka is still coming back from the injury, so 
how many more years? Can you give him the mic on that one? Yeah. Here, show your face. Um. Uh, well, you know, just you know, how many you said how many more years? Well, I'll give it a couple more years, and I think we'll have a good team. Now, are you right now? Are you at ninety-five miles an hour on your fastball? Nah, no, nah, I'm working on it. Uh, what Where you at right now? Like, I say about. 70, 75, 74. Okay, because CC said early he was going to be throwing at 85, so that means you're getting up there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right, cool. CC Sabathia, for those of y'all, I mean, y'all should know who CC Sabathia is, but just in case y'all don't know, that, that's, the, that's the big bull for the Yankees, CC Sabathia. So we're looking for you to step up and take that spot when, he's, when he gets ready to retire. Yeah. All right, and uh, well, we're going to get into some of the sports that's going on uh, and, and some of the hot topics for this week. Uh, NBA All-Star Weekend is in New York. We're very excited about that. And um, we, we got Dwayne Wade, who is not going to be playing in this All-Star game. Carmelo Anthony may or may not play in the All-Star game this uh, Sunday at Madison Square Garden. Uh, Trip Young, do you have any ideas on who would be replacing Dwayne Wade and possibly Carmelo Anthony in the East? Uh, whew, if both of them, if neither one of them play, I would hope somebody from the Nets, because I, I don't think anybody else from the Knicks is gonna, it, you know, is even worthy of the All Star team. So I, maybe somebody from the Nets just. I voted for Stoudemire just because. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I don't know if that was I gonna doubt, happen. Yeah, but maybe no, somebody from the deserving. Nets. I know Mason Plumlee is in the dunk contest, so maybe him. He's been playing good as of late. But you gotta have somebody from New York to represent the East when it's you know the game is gonna be at Madison Square Garden. You gotta have somebody from one of the New York teams. But it's oh, man, it's a, it's a rough one. I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Y'all y'all are y'all y'all ready for the All Star game this weekend? Yeah, yeah. Who 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 y'all got? I'm gonna take it over here. Um, I don't really follow basketball that much. Alright, we gonna go back going back on this direction. Uh, I know like we're from the East, New York, but I gotta go with the West because yeah, they don't have that much people that like are really. Talented in the East that much. What about LeBron? LeBron, he, I think he's overrated, to be honest. <laughs> yes! Like, my guy right there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He, he is the best player in basketball, though. But go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I agree the, with Carlos, because, yeah, I uh, 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 Hold the on, West. you agree that LeBron is overrated? Yeah, also, too. Oh, nice. My goodness. <laughs> As president of the LeBron James Hate Club, I, I'm I don't, I don't, I don't two follow new basketball members. too much. Yeah. All right, so right now we already got two players that won't be back the next time the Titans come back <laughs> onto the show. All right, anybody else over here feel like LeBron's overrated or are y'all good? Oh my goodness. Oh man. <laughs> All right, you know what? I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let y'all let y'all have that there one. We go. We got the LeBron hate we going, going strong. With the I'm loving it. I'm and, loving and you it. guys, you guys are from New York. Y'all supposed to be going the for kids the East on my anyway. Side today. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I I don't know what what I would do. All right, man. So so everybody's taking the Western Conference this year. Yeah. yeah. No. All right. You know what? You need to come up. Let let just let him get some room, please. Let him let him get some camera time. Go ahead. I think he's taking it. All right. Because that's where I'm from. Okay. Yeah. That's what I like to see. Okay. You get the mic for the rest you of the think show. LeBron is, <laughs> do you think LeBron is overrated? Nah, I think he's good. Damn. Exactly. See, now <laughs> that thank was you. was almost unanimous. To Somebody <laughs> on the team. You know what? Okay, yeah, you definitely. Hold on, to that, hold on to that microphone. Give this man some space so he can see on, you know, I want the fans at home. What position you play again on the team? Left field. Left field? Exactly. Left field. That was always my favorite position anyway. All right? So <laughs> definitely, you, you, yeah, you need to hold on to that microphone. But, yeah, the All-Star game is this weekend. You got the dunk contest. You got the three-point shootout. For all of you Western Conference guys, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, who you taking in the in the three point shootout? Kyle Culver. Kyle Culver, yeah. Everybody's taking Kyle Culver? Steph Curry. Steph Curry, all right. Steph Curry. Ste okay, Steph Curry, Kyle Culver. Nobody's going with Kyrie? No. You, no. You, y'all didn't see what he did last year in the All Star game? All them threes he hit? Oh, my goodness. All right, all right. Do you know what? Who you got? Uh, Steph Curry. Steph Curry? All right, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at Steph Curry on that one. I I think Steph Curry could take it too. He is probably one of the best three point shooters in the league. But I think it is going to be a great three point shooter. Yeah. Well, we got to say. I mean, he is playing for the Hawks, and the Hawks they are they are doing uh pretty pretty good right now. First place in the Eastern Conference as well. So so I'm I'm liking that. Um, and then in the dunk contest, I mean, 
it's, it's a lot of guys that you know nobody's really heard of in the dunk contest. Like I said, Mason Plumley from the Nets is in there, but I think that's might be the biggest name in the dunk contest. And you got a uh, G in this Costa Kuka Tuka Tuka. I don't know how to pronounce his name, you know, but uh, he's in the dunk contest. And you know, so I don't know. I think the three point shootout is kind of overshadowing the dunk contest this year. What, what do you guys think? Everybody in the dunk contest is watching. <laughs> All right. Who is your ideal dunk contest competitors? Me. Wait, who would I who, want? Yeah, who do you want? Who's the, the four players that you want to see in the dunk contest if you had your pick? Russell Westbrook. Okay. Uh, young Kobe, I mean, obviously he's injured. Well, yeah, he can't even walk, so <laughs> go ahead. Who else? You scratch him. Uh, let me they got to be able to play right now. All right, so Russell Kobe Westbrook. A trampoline yeah. and <laughs> Russell Westbrook, uh, let me see. John Wall. John Wall, okay. Blake Griffin okay. and James Harden. Okay. Speaking of Blake Griffin, he will not be playing in this year's uh, All-Star game because he had a staph infection in, in the shooting arm. So he actually had a surgery. So he's going to be out until after the All-Star break, maybe a month. So he is actually being replaced by Damian Lillard, point guard for the Portland Trailblazers. And uh, one of the other fillings is going to be DeMarcus Cousins, who will be playing in the West as well. Yeah, those were the big two snubs, so uh, I'm glad that they're uh, able to make it. Kobe, obviously, uh, not playing in this uh, year's uh, either. So, And Ke there was some speculation uh, as to whether Kevin Durant deserved to be in the All-Star game because of the amount of games that he played uh, due to injury. What do you guys think? Do you guys think uh, Kevin Durant should be in the All-Star game even though he didn't play that many games? I mean, I'm an OKC fan, so I'm going to say of course, no doubt. Well, I, I personally agree with you because I feel, I mean, he's arguably the second best player in the game um, behind LeBron James since everyone feels that LeBron is the best, and even though my panel over here disagrees with that, which I enjoy. <laughs> Uh, Anthony Davis is great. So those are the top three players in the league. Uh, and to not have one of the best in the game be out there, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. And what I did like from Kevin Durant is he said that anybody that feels that he doesn't deserve to be in the All-Star game can play him one-on-one -on -one for his spot. So uh, I, I definitely enjoyed him coming out and saying that comment. But what do you guys think? What about the rest of the panel here? Uh, what, what do you guys think as far as Kevin Durant? Which one of y'all wants to step up and play him one-on-one -on -one for his spot on the All-Star team? You, you know what? You look like you can beat him, too, if you stepped in on the court and played him one-on-one. -on -one. What, what do you think? Um, pick the mic up. You, you can go. Don't be scared. Go ahead. Pick that mic up. I don't know. You, do you think you could beat Kevin Durant one-on-one -on -one for his spot on the All-Star team? You, you're a little shorter than him, but you know uh, what? I eat and everything. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's that. That's what I like to hear. Now, this, okay, this is just because last year, because I'm glad Coach Calls is back on the set with us, because I remember, if I, if, I, if my memory is not going, you are the Knicks fan on the panel. Now, it's, it's been worse. It's gotten worse since last, since the last you joined us on the set. It has gotten worse. The Knicks are currently, are they in, right, they tied for last in the East right now? Or are they at last right now, Statman? Because I know as the Knicks fan, you know, on the panel as well, I know it's rough for you guys. So I'm, I'm glad that you're back at this point because we're at the halfway point in the season. You guys got the Zen Master in there. Melo came back. I want to know from the Knicks fans on the set, what's going on with the Knicks? Could, please pass the mic to Coach Calls. Well, it's a bad season. But, you know, draft pick, get the number one draft pick, that's what I'm shooting for. So we, so y'all tanking the season, that's what you think yeah. is going on? Yes, down? yes, they got to tank the season. <laughs> Shut down Carmelo. So, okay, after the All-Star game, what No, play? right now. All right now, right now. Over? Shut him down. All right, now, another question, because in, right in the news recently, there was some, you know, back and forth between James Dolan and uh, one of the, a fan of the Knicks, an older gentleman. I don't know if you if you heard the story yeah. yet. And uh, he basically, you know, insinuated some things about him being an alcoholic and told him he should go be a Nets fan and, and whatnot if he's not happy. But what do you think about James Dolan? Is it time for him to go? Yes. He should he should have kept it prof professional in a way, like you can't let that affect you. What fans are gonna say yeah. about you? Should have kept it professional. But I, I never liked the Dolan. I think he should sell the team, tire him already. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Dolan was responsible for for that mellow trade. I always took it out on Mellow that he should have waited till the end of the year 
instead of us uh, giving up so many pieces. But it was actually James Dolan that was adamant about getting Carmelo because he was afraid he might go to the Nets. And he, he, he was adamant about making the trade happen that year. And Dolan has been responsible for a lot of uh, bad moves out there in Knicks history. So uh, I think he should have gone a long time ago. Yep. So how many more years before, because it was, I think it's 44 right now since the last championship for the Knicks. Is it, how many more years is it going to be? And you guys can both answer this question. How many more years is it going to be before the Knicks get back to the promised land? Oh, man, I... <laughs> I wish it's. Did you just say 4,000? I, I, I just wish <laughs> next year we win it. You're back on my good side, all right? You're back on my good side over I just here. hope we win it next year. That's. You got to keep the hope alive. Yep. You know what? I, I, I'm with you on that one. Keep the hope alive. I don't know what's going on with the Knicks, but I want to get back to you guys, the USC Titans, and baseball, because one thing that we need to let the people know is if they would like for their kids to be a part of the USC Titans baseball team, how do they go about that? They just come and register PS24 on Sundays, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. PS24 is 660 West 236th Street. Um, the entrance is on 235th Street across from the library. We're there Sundays. We're there Tuesdays from 6 to 8. And we are there Saturdays from 8 to 10 in the morning. And what about um, if there's parents that may want to volunteer as coaches or to help out with the team? Is that possible too? Come on down. Okay. You know, we're, we're always looking for help. Uh, you know, we're growing, like I said before, um, faster than we know what to do. What's the ro the full roster like now? Um, you know, we're still trying to fill a, a bunch of spots on the 12U. Um, 10 is filling up very quickly. 13 is filling up very quickly. 14 is pretty much full, right? You're just looking yeah. for maybe some pitching. And 15 is, is pretty much full. And 15 is where it stops at? Yes. Right now, we're, we're those are the age groups. Okay. You know, we may add next season. But right now, this is this is where we're at. All right. And you guys uh, basically work off of private donations to, to fund the uh, we're, league. We're we're always looking for donations. Yeah, I you know this is all volunteer work. Um, we're, we're a five hundred one C three charity. Um, we're just trying to break even. You know, we've put a lot of our time and our own money in, and um, you know it. it it really helps when we have, you know, fundraising that that's successful and donations. Um, it's it, it's really it's really a lot of work, you know, behind the scenes. It's not just playing baseball. No. And uh, how can the fans out there uh, donate? Do you, have, do you guys have like a website for more information or? Yeah. Well, you can always email us. It's. Uh, what is it? Titans Baseball Club That's at hotmail.com. And uh, we're Facebook Titans BC. So you can always uh, get in touch with us that way. Um, you know, you'll see us on the street. We're usually wearing Titans gear. So uh, everybody's pretty much in tune with, with we're, we're pretty much a, a big family. Uh, that's what we've stressed since the beginning. And, um, you know, anybody can help any fan or any potential donor. Or, or, or sponsor or anything like that. Okay. All right. Now, to the to the kids on the panel, I want to I want to know because everybody here is Yankee fans, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. I'm a Yankee I, fan. yeah. I forgot you 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 split on your decisions right now. But there's no no Mets fans on the panel, right? No. 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 Well, only winners here, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Good. That's what I that, that's what I like to hear. Now. Who do you guys model your games after? So we're going to go across. So I'm going to start right there. And introduce yourself one more time for the people. Look into the camera. Don't... Look in the camera. Stand up. My name is Brandon and Derek Cheater. That's right, the captain. Yep. Uh, my name is Carlos, and I might the same one, Derek Jeter, because like, he's passionate about the game. And he always like focuses on defense, and he doesn't re really let stuff like get into his mind and stuff. He he just worries about the game and nothing else. Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter, because he's a he's a great role model to everybody, not just the kids, to parents. You know, um, he carries himself good on and off the field, and you know, just like Bryce Harper said, he's not just the captain of the Yankees. He's a captain of baseball. He's the most respected player, 
And yeah, I agree. I agree with my fellow teammates. He did your homework. You want? You knew you was coming on TV. You wanted to sound real good on the camera. I like that. I like that, man. I agree. I picked Derek Jeter. All right. Uh, I also picked Derek Jeter. What was the question again? We know it's David Ortiz. We know. Come on. Nah, nobody. To be honest with you, I don't. See, they, you know David Ortiz got to be different. See, because they cut you up right now. Yeah, see, no. it's David Ortiz here. He, he's got the C on his chest. He's yeah, not, he's not worried about why, the other Yeah, captain. he is the captain. Nah, it's not even that. It's just I want to be myself. I want to do things my way. I don't want to be, or I don't want, I'm not going to say that I want to be Derek G. I want to be Brian Morrell. That's it. I want to play the game how I know I can play the game and be different. And who who would it. your favorite player be, though? My favorite player is Henry Ramirez. Okay, all That's right. That's pretty much it. Well, for the most part, we got Derek Jeter, though, who just retired from yeah. baseball. Oh, man. What does Derek Jeter mean to baseball? And we're going to go back around. For me? Mm hmm It means a lot, actually. It's just to play, like, 20 seasons, no fights, no arguments, to play the game professional with good sportsmanship and love for the game is just incredible, to be honest. It's like... You could you could learn from his experience basically. That's basically what our coaches want us to do. Like you see how he plays so professional, sportsmanship. That's what our coaches want us to do basically. Well, Derek Jeter shows that baseball players aren't just baseball players. They're also people and they don't act like they're superior to other people. Um, Derek Jeter means a lot to baseball. Um, he's like a role model to everyone, and I think it's going to be hard to replace him as a captain. I personally think he's a perfect example of a baseball player. Yeah, of a real base, good baseball player. <laughs> Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter means a lot to the game. You know, he's played in the game. So, you know, like just like Brian said, for 20 years, you know, he he's probably I think mastered every every play I think at shortstop because you know he goes hard on everything. You know, just just like the the game that he ran into the fans and and uh, rest, uh versus the Boston Red Sox. You know, just shows that he has so much heart and passion for the game. You know, and I think I think every kid should look up to Derek Jeter. Like Julio said, he's like a perfect representation of a real baseball player. Like. He's like, of course, a future Hall of Famer, but he's like, say, oh, sorry. Sorry, take your time. You can't wait yeah. to give his answer. Yeah. He's anxious yeah. over there in the corner. <laughs> yeah, so like, yeah, he's a team player, so he doesn't always worry about himself. He always worries about his teammates, and like, it shows his determination for the game that he always wants to win, and he like wins champ, always wants to win championships. Be like, it shows it because his multiple championships that he has. Um. Well, Derek Jeter means more to. Um, like to people than he does to baseball because he has become such a great role model after all these stuff that he's done and all the big things that he's accomplished in his life. And I think fans really look up to him because not because of baseball, just because of his personality. That's right, go ahead, last, last one, come on. We said the best for last. Derek Jeter, that's the captain, man, go ahead. That's right. You got this. <laughs> That's, listen, hold on. Did you see the Derek Jeter respect video? When everybody tipped their hats to Derek Jeter? No. You didn't see that? Oh, we got to play the Real Fizz, Real Talk version for y'all then later on. But, you know, as a five-time world champion in Derek Jeter, definitely one of the greatest to play the game. And it's good, you know, to see the influence that he's had on, on all of you guys because he's definitely a class act on and off the field. If you, if you guys would model yourselves after a baseball player, Derek Jeter is the example of someone too because he's someone that doesn't get in trouble off the field and on the field. He's probably, I think he's the best shortstop you know, of all time. That could be just my personal opinion and my Yankee bias, but he definitely plays the game like that, and he means more to baseball as a whole. It's not even, it's, with Jerry Jeter, it's bigger than the Yankees. He's probably the only player who's big, bigger than his team, and he represents what baseball is supposed to, to be about. 
So it's definitely the right person for you guys to, to model your, your games after. I just want to say one more thing. That Take, grab the mic. Also, there will be no one else like Derek Jeter because of most of the things that he's done that I don't think anyone would be as good as Derek Jeter anymore. I think so. That, that is the face of baseball right there, Derek Jeter, the captain. And I think, you know, if there is someone like Derek Jeter, it's going to be a long time before someone has the impact on the game that Derek Jeter has. Because it's not only about being popular, but you have to do the right thing both on and off the field. And on top of that, you have to win and put the numbers up to back that. And Derek Jeter has done all of that. So it, it will be a while if there is somebody that comes up and does it. But I don't see anybody right now. Is, is, there any, is there anybody who matches his work ethic? Um, you know, this guy was in the cage all the time. Mm -hmm. He was fielding grounders all the time. So everything he did that looked easy, yeah. You know it wasn't easy. It was just practice and practice and practice. And that's how you get good. And all these guys know because all winter they've been practicing five days a week. Yep. Um, so, you know, it, it's about being prepared on game day. And he was always prepared. You never saw him unprepared. Even when he broke his leg, yeah. he still tried to make that play. Yep. And he was, I mean, he's crawling. Exactly. So, I mean, there that that for me... All the other stuff, you know, he has all the in intangibles, all the hard work, but it, he just he did it one better than everybody else. So now, how would you would you guys with your with your practice and, and, and workout regimens, could you kind of could you tell us, coach, um, what you guys do to get the kids ready and in shape for the season, and then during the season, how do you guys continue and build on that? Well, we do a lot of conditioning because that's what you got to build on in in the winter. So during the winter, so. This is what what we focus on, mm. because a lot of you know, a lot of a lot of players they don't do that in the off season, and you see them getting hurt when season starts. So we start with the conditioning, then we we do fielding here and there, waiting for for a time to warm up before we could go outside. But the conditioning is the strength and conditioning is the biggest part. And when of does the, the uh, when does the season start again? April. April. April okay. eight. All right, so once again, parents and whatnot, if you guys are, are trying to bring your kids to uh, to be a part of that USC Titans baseball team, April 1st, the season starts. So you need to get down there beforehand, talk to the coaches. You want to tell them one more time where they can reach you guys at? Well, you can reach, you can reach us at Facebook, Titans Baseball Club, and um, you can email us, uh, timebaseball at hotmail.com. And um, you you will see the, all the information on the Facebook page, the number where you could contact. You could go to PS24, 660 West, 236th Street, Riverdale. So that's where we're going to be at. And um, Spanish-speaking speak, people, I'm going to say in Spanish. Ustedes lo pueden encontrar en la página de Facebook, the Titan Baseball Club. Y o nos pueden mandar email. Uh, time ba baseball a uh, hotmail.com y pueden ir a la escuela PS PS24 que está localizado en la 236 en Riverdale en el 60 West ok in el bronx en el bronx en el bronx en el bronx y'all didn't know trip young spoke a little espanol y'all better oh. recognize all right <laughs> but uh definitely i have to say it in spanish because you know got <laughs> no, a, definitely, a lot of definitely. spanish people out there so that's right and if you guys are just joining us we are coming to you live right here on bronx and this is real fans real talk and you see the set is crowd is not just myself and the stat man we got the usc titans baseball team what is that's our official real fans real talk little league team we don't root for no other little league teams but this one and a uh, shout out to sean fontaine right now he's not here but he's definitely holding us down so shout out to sean fontaine we had to kick him out because there wasn't enough room on the yeah, side. Yeah, wasn't so. enough room today. Plus, so. he's, he's still got his HGH scandal. Yeah, that so. too. So, but shout out to Sean Fontaine. He'll be back with us uh, next week right here on the set. And if you guys want to check us out online, it's realfansrealtalk.com. We're also on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk. And if you want to hit us up on Twitter or Instagram, it's at realfantalk. We're going to have some pictures with the Titans up there on the Instagram page this week. So y'all y'all better get up on that. And if y'all not following us, make sure y'all start following us because we're going to keep y'all posted on what's going on. And um, it's about that time. It's about, about the hour, 6 o'clock. 
And when we jump into into the little game that we like to play called Shot for Shot, and uh, Coach Carlos, if I can get you to put the jersey on again. Oh, man. And I'm going to give you the, the questions right here on the screen for you to for you to be the judge once again. And um, here you go right here. Boom. Five questions. Statement, you want to explain the rules? Yeah, the way it works uh, on Shot for Shot, we ask a series of five questions unless we go to overtime. Whoever the judge agrees with gets the point. If both contestants agree, no point is awarded. And the loser has to wear team apparel of a team that they hate. So uh, without further ado, let's get started with the first question, please. All right, first question. Over and under, 30% chance the Thunder missed the playoffs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go under, man. Kevin Durant is back healthy again. Westbrook is back healthy. I know they they trailing right now, but we got the whole second half of the season to go. I think as as they continue to get healthier, I think they will make the playoffs. It's gonna be a low seed, which is gonna be trouble for the number one seed or number two seed, but I think they will make it. So I'm gonna go with the under on that one. They're gonna make the playoffs. That was beautiful. <laughs> there, there, there is the rumor going around that teams might tank uh, on purpose to teams like the Suns to try to keep the Thunder out of the playoffs, but um, I, I'm still going to agree with Tripp. I mean, if they weren't healthy, then that would be a different story, uh, but Kevin Durant is back. Uh, if the question, I mean, mo most likely I think that they're going to stay healthy, so if they're not healthy, then they'll miss it, but if they're healthy, which I think that they are, then they will make it, so... I'm going to agree with Tripp and uh, go with the under on that. All right, so we'll go to the next question. All right, second question. Good or bad move for by, by the bill signing Richie Cognito? If you guys don't know Richie oh. Cognito, he was the lineman for the Miami Dolphins that was involved in the uh, bullying uh, controversy about two years ago now. Um, he was suspended. He's, he's, he's been out of the league for about a year and a half, and he was just signed by the Buffalo Bills the other day? I'm going to say it's a good move. I mean, people deserve a second chance. We see that in sports all the time. Michael Vick, uh, we're most likely going to see uh, Ray Rice and Adrian Peterson come back. So uh, Incognito had his own scandal. I mean, he's not a, a superstar or anything, but he was a starting offensive lineman. And uh, linemen are a very valuable part of the team, and the Bills uh, saw value in him, and he'll probably be in their starting O-line next year. So I think uh, it was a good move. Yeah, I got to agree. They could definitely use the help on the offensive line. And again, you know, okay, he did. You know, he did his. He did. He did something wrong, but he did. He served his time, and we, you know, we're supposed to let things go. Once that, once you do your time, let them get back out there on that field. So I think it was a good move. All right. All right. Over and under, seventy percent chance the Knicks finish the with the worst record in the NBA. Could you could you read that question one more time? <laughs> no, Over don't read it again. Seventy percent chance it. the Knicks finish with the worst record in the NBA. Oh man, over under seventy percent chance. Ooh, that's a hot number. Seventy percent the Knicks. Oh, Melo been going back and forth in and out of the lineup. Over on the sun, worst record. Hmm. 70 is still hot over it. I should say 10 is high. Ah, uh, what does that mean? Kobe is out now in LA too, so that might affect, affect things. And you got the 76ers, they still doing bad. As much as I would love to say Carmelo yes, yes is over. 70% chance. I can't. 70 is just too high. I can't say over 70%. I got to go with the under on that one. I don't think they're going to finish with the worst record. If yes. Kobe wasn't out for the season, then I would I would feel differently, but that Kobe injury kind of changed things. And then the 76ers, they still still suck. So I, <laughs> I gotta say under. I can't I can't go over 70% chance. I'm going to disagree. We're gonna have our first disagreement. I'm going to say over because Car they're gonna rest Carmelo Anthony. They're gonna start losing all, almost every game. They already have the record for most losses in a row in franchise history this season. And they're, they're going to try to tank the season. That was the game plan. That's the reason for trading J.R. Smith and Iman Shumpert. Uh, you know, the, there's no point in them winning any games from this point on, uh, other than to make some of the fans happy on, in the home crowd every now and then. But I, I would say over because that's, that's their plan. So. All right. 
over and under 40 percent. Wait, uh, we, we disagreed, so who, who, who do you agree with? I agree with you. All right, awesome. <laughs> Sorry, Trip. <laughs> Sorry, it's all good. I'd rather it that way on that question. Nah, no, it's, good, it's good for y'all to say that, you know? It makes me feel it's better. It's just Carmelo. They're going to shit yeah. down Carmelo. You will see it. Over and under, 40 percent chance the cap moving to second place in the East by next Tuesday. Um, I'm going to say over. The Cavs are hot right now. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're clicking on all cylinders. Le, Le, LeBron, Kyrie Irving doing their thing. Uh, I think that, you know, um, yeah, I think that they'll, they'll jump up to second. Yeah, I got to agree. Um, everybody's playing well. They even got Kevin Love, you know, playing like Kevin Love. And on top of the fact they play uh, two of the teams that's in front of them by game, the Bulls and uh, Washington, uh, this week. So, uh, and I feel like they'll beat both of those teams. So I gotta agree on that one. So we got last question. Last question. Jerry Rice said the Patriots will have an asterisk next to the this year's Super Bowl win after admitting to using Stickham during his career. Should the 49ers have an asterisk next to the? Um, well, let me just break that down for those at home that don't know. Jerry Rice submitted to using Stick'em, and what that is, that's the, the little glue that you put on your hands that helps you catch the, the football, which uh, was made illegal in uh, 1981, which means that he would have still been using that stuff during the times that he won his Super Bowl rings, and he admitted to that uh, this past uh, week. Um, so I would say, I mean, if you... If, if you're going by his logic, then I would say yes, then he should have an asterisk next to his too because, you know, I mean, that's cheating. Basically, it's if it's something that's made illegal, you know, it's, it's cheating, it's cheating. So I think he should have an asterisk next to, next to those rings, you know? Yeah, definitely. And it's sad to hear, you know, Jerry Rice was, you know, one of the greatest of all time. Uh, the greatest of all time, and then now hearing that, it kind of takes uh, away from some of his accomplishments. But yeah, definitely, I, I think an asterisk for sure. So we're in agreement on that one. Yeah. Final score: one nothing. Yours truly, Mark the Statman Skevich, is still <laughs> champion. Um, could you do me a favor and take get in, uh, a Red down, Sox man. hat out of that bag over there for for? Oh, uh, take it down by the, by the <laughs> That's not good. Yeah, just let David Ortiz do it too. That's just, that's just wrong, man. That, that is just wrong. Let David Ortiz do it. All right. Oh boy. Do we got the other one? Got the other one. I think there's another one in there. There's another, you know, Red Sox one in there. I like, I like to, I like to fit it at. But um, oh, you know what, guys? While while we doing that, I do he's just trying to delay wearing it. He's being picky about which one. I do want to take a quick moment of silence uh, for Ed Sable from NFL Films. So we can take a quick moment of silence on the, on the set. All right. Rest in peace to uh, Ed Sable, NFL Films. He kind of revolutionized how we watch the game of football, with that whole NFL Films, all the documentary footage that he put together. Once again, I have to put this disclaimer out there. If you are watching the show right now, no, I'm not a Red Sox fan, but I did lose shot for shot. I know when we go to Boston later this month, some people out there are going to be happy and they're going to be showing me pictures on the Instagram page about how Trip Young was on set with a Red Sox hat. But, you know, it, it, it's not what it looks like, guys. It's not what it looks like, all right? Don't, don't hold me accountable for this for too long. It's coming off after the show, all right? And um, we're going we're gonna to jump into really quick to uh, one of the fan mail questions. I want to get um, back to the All-Star game. I know the kids gave their picks, but we didn't give our picks. But uh, Glenn from Suffolk County writes, who's your pick to win um, and for All-Star game MVP? Statman, who are you going with? I'm going with the West, and I'm going with Kevin Durant. I'm going with the East. And I'm going with the King, LeBron James. I have to, I have to represent. Wah, wah. <laughs> man, King James. I mean, I'm, I'm rooting for the East because obviously, you know, I, I live in the East, but I think uh, the West has more talent. And I think Kevin Durant is going to go 
hard just because, you know, the, the controversy surrounding him being in the All-Star game and people feeling like he doesn't deserve it because of the amount of games that he played. So I think he's going to go extra hard for that reason, and I think he's going to come up with the MVP. Well, he wasn't named a starter, so I, I think, I guess, from, from that standpoint, it's kind of like, you know, good. But, I mean, they are climbing the ladder, so now that he's back. So I'm not even mad that Kevin Durant's on the team. Plus, I mean, that's what the people want to see. He's healthy. It's not like he didn't play the whole year, you know, and then he, they just put him on the team. So I'm not I'm not mad at that. Um, also, we got to shout out Greg Popovich, who uh, made it to the 1,000 win club this past uh, evening. They beat the, uh, Phil, uh, the Indiana Pacers so he can get his 1,000th uh, career win. And also, we got to shout out my man Coach K from Duke, the Blue Devils, also passed that uh, 1,000 win margin earlier um, earlier this week. So <laughs> shout out to Coach K on that one. Also, coach of Team USA, Olympic gold, you know, medalist and, and, and all of that. So shout out to him for that. But uh, definitely to Coach Pop, you know, in the NBA, one of the greatest coaches that I've seen. You know, I mean, Coach Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, David Robinson, Mom Ginobili, so many greats. And, um, you know, also under his tutelage is the man that's got the uh, Golden State Warriors playing the way, you know, they were, Steve Kerr. You know, so definitely shout out to uh, to Coach Pop. A thousand wins, that is no small feat. You got to, gotta you know, clap that up for that man. He's, he's doing great. And, I mean, the Spurs are in a position to not only make the, make the playoffs, but go deep into the playoffs pretty much every year. So, you know, you, you got to love that. One of the greatest basketball minds. I was a little upset when they beat uh, Miami, but, um, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. Shout out to Coach <laughs> Kate, to uh, Coach Pop on, on, on that one. All right. And uh, we're live here on Bronx Net Television, Real Fans, Real Talk. Make sure you check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Real Fans, Real Talk. Twitter and Instagram at Real Fan Talk. All our individual Twitter addresses, contact information, uh, is on our website, realfansrealtalk.com. I want to thank the fans that wrote in. Our email address is fanmail at realfansrealtalk.com. And we are joined by the Titans Little League team here. And since they're on the live award-winning, uh, critically acclaimed Real Fans Real Talk TV show, I want to give you guys each a chance to give a special shout out to a friend or family member. I don't want mom sending us an e email addresses saying they didn't get a chance to say hi mom or anything like that. So uh, once again, your name and uh, shout out to a friend, family members we want to shout out on look live at, TV. Look at this camera right here, right guys? Look at the camera. Over here, number three. My name is Bannon. I would like to give a shout out to... You, you you gotta say your parents. That's yeah. that's that's mom. goes uh you gotta say my mom and my dad's last coach. Okay, cool, cool. Uh my name is Carlos and I wanna give a shout out to my mom because my dad's already here, so I don't really So yeah, he could just sell himself. <laughs> uh my name is Max, I'd like to give a shout out to my dad who's also one of the coaches for the twelve U and he couldn't be here. Um, my name is Julio. I want to give a shout out to my mom and dad, and also my cousin Gabe, who couldn't join me today, but or join us. But yeah, you know, shout out to him. My name is Alex, <clears throat> and I want to give a shout out to my mom. My name is Robinson. And I want to give a shout out to my parents. Mama, I love you. <laughs> oh, that was so sweet. Oh. My name is Sam, and I want to give a shout out to my dad. David Ortiz, it's on you. <laughs> my name is Brian, and I want to give a shout out to my parents and everybody else at home watching. That's right. And I, you know what? Oh, right, my man is Howie over there, Peter. That's yeah, right. I, <laughs> I want to give another shout out to all of the parents of, of these young gentlemen because you know it takes you know a lot for for parents these days to keep you know the kids on the right path, and they have them involved in something positive, and it's, they're supportive. And it's good to see that, that you all you guys all know that you shout out your parents like that because I know that they put in a lot of effort to, to get you guys to, to where you are. And also shout out to the coaches because they take their time out to uh, to help you guys to teach you guys the right way to do things. And you know, and these guys are also your role models. So I wanna just clap it up for the coaches on the panel real quick. 
you know, it's, a, it's always a, a pleasure to, to have you guys out here. You know, myself and the Statman, we try to, you know, get involved when we can, but you guys are like on the battlefield with these kids, you know, and, and you don't have to do it. You know, this is something that you guys, you know, you love baseball, or even if you don't love baseball, but you out here, but you love these kids and you're supporting them, you know, and not everybody is willing to step up and take that charge. So, you know, you guys should definitely be commended for that because, I mean, we need it. Because these kids, so many kids is out here doing the wrong thing, but you got these kids, you know, and they, they love the game of baseball, you know, they want to play baseball, and they're continuing. I mean, like, you know, the, especially for the guys that were here last year on the set with us, I see you guys are back, you're growing up, you know, even, even more, but you guys are still dedicated to the game, dedicated to your team, you know, and that's really what it's all about. And, and the coaches, they have a huge part in that because those are the guys that you guys really have to look up to on the field. I know when you're on, when you're on the field and it's game time, it's you know it's up to you. You guys depend on your teammates, but these guys have to get you to that point, and you know they've been doing it for some years now. So we definitely have to recognize that, you know. Yeah. All right, and uh, you guys mentioned earlier on you used to be the USC Titans, and now you branched out on your own. Like, what was the process like with that, the transition? Well, we, I guess we we grew the. Organization, so we got too big for them. So what we decided was just to go independent in that way, because you know they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't take care of us the way we, you know. Mm -hmm. They could tell you more. Uh, they, you know, you know, our our whole focus <laughs> is is protecting these kids and playing baseball. Uh, USA, great organization. They have other interests as well. All we care about is is these kids and baseball. So, w as we grew so fast, it it just we we would have blown up the place. The facility wasn't even big enough to hold us anymore. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we had some long, hard conversations, and um, we decided that going forward, this was absolutely the best way to go because then we can concentrate on these kids and baseball. Um, we don't have to worry about booking cage time and, and fighting with other people about that. Um, so this it was just a natural progression and um, yeah, we've added three teams this year and it's just, it, it, there's so many kids now that it, it just, we, we, the only <coughs> natural thing to do was to do it ourselves. And how many coaches are there? Two, four, six, 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 six coaches. Okay. How far do you guys travel? What's like the furthest distance that you guys travel for a game? Um, well, for tournaments, we've been to Delaware. Um, for league play, um, Yorktown, Connecticut, um, South Jersey. Uh, most mostly in, in uh, Westchester, maybe some Rockland, um, but for tournaments, you know, anything goes. We'll we'll go to Cooperstown. We're going to Cooperstown. We're going to Ripken. Um, we're probably going to go back to Delaware Sports at the Beach. Um, you know, we'll we'll go anywhere. Have you, you you said Cooperstown? Have you guys been to Cooperstown and uh, visited the uh, Baseball Hall of Fame as a group yet, or? No, no. Th this this would be our first year going to Cooperstown, so we really excited about it. And you guys are definitely going to make that visit to the yes, Hall of Fame. Yes, we're going to do that. Whole team, parents, if they come, you know. Have any of you been there before uh, on your own? Would what, what, what'd you think? I knew it was awesome because we saw at the place we saw, we didn't like see them actually on eyes, but we saw like kind of statues or, and, and the Was the cow there? Do you remember the cow? No. The cow was there. The cow was there under the stairs. It was all the way in the beginning. Yeah. Who else, who else has been to the baseball? It's a Yankee Hall of Fame. cow. It's a, it was a story behind it. Well, I thought it was really cool going to the Baseball Hall of Fame because it showed like the history of the first baseball game and <coughs> present day baseball games. 
and just history of all the players and the best players, and it was really cool. When I went to Cooperstown, that was, that was basically like the only fun thing we did. Like, we went to the Hall of Fame. Cooperstown, to be honest, is boring. You can't really do nothing. <laughs> the only thing over there is the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's that's pretty yeah, much that's <laughs> accurate. Why you go to, you go to Cooperstown. And did anyone else go? We're gonna have to bring you back, all right, and just do a show with just you, all right? Oh yeah. You got a lot to say. Um, you know. These two are mine, so uh, they went with me. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I found at Cooperstown to be amazing was walking through, they, they have an art museum, and it has to do with, with art that's just related to baseball. And I was drawn to one picture, and I don't know why, and then when I looked at it, it was baseball in its very early stages of, of professional baseball being played at Van Cortland Park, wow. where the golf course is now. And you could look at it and see that it's the golf course. You know, we've played golf on there, we've sledded on there, we've hung out there, mm -hmm. and there's professional baseball that was being played there. So that, that was just a phenomenal thing to see. And, and then all the records and yeah. everything about Cooperstown or the Hall of Fame is phenomenal. Um, yeah, Coopers and there's some good stuff to do in the town other than just the <laughs> Hall of Fame. <laughs> Let's not slam Cooperstown, but... Uh, you know, it, it, it's a great experience for anybody who's a baseball fan. And did you go there before, or was the first time you went with the kids? It was the first time that I had gone as well. Um, and it was, strangely enough, it was my wife's idea. And, um, <laughs> yeah, it was. And, um, <laughs> and um, it, sh she's a baseball fan, not quite like we are, but um, it, it, it's just great for the whole family. Um, a lot of fun. Uh, you get to really see pieces of your history um, when you look at, you know, um, you see the Derek Jeter stats, you see the, you know, uh, Barry Bonds with, with the Asterix, um, all the plaques. Uh, when, when you walk into the, the monument room, uh, it, it's just, you know, it takes your breath away. Standing there and looking at, like, Roberto Clemente's plaque or the life-size uh, statues of, of Babe Ruth and Ted Williams, um, the Ty Cobb plaque. Honus Wagner's bat, <laughs> which was a tree trunk. I, I mean, I don't know how he swung it. Maybe you could swing that bat. Probably. Now, I, I have a question <laughs> for all of the, 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 the kids on the panel, and this is show of hands right now. All you have to do is raise your hand. Who that's on the panel right now is going to be enshrined in the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame? You better all put your hands up. That's right. <laughs> all right, that's what I, okay, that's what I wanted to make sure. If I didn't see one of them hands up, we're going to have a problem. But no, that's what I like to see. That's the confidence that y'all supposed to have, all right? Because, I mean, you guys are winners, all right? First of all, as soon as you step out onto, onto that field, on the mound, you guys are already winners for going out there. Because a lot of people won't even lace up the cleats and go out there to play this game. So the fact that you guys are going out there, you know, when you guys go out there, you're already winning. But I want to see all of you guys. And then once you guys get there, I'm gonna need uh, box seats on this <laughs> on the first baseline at Yankee Stadium. All right, so just put, you know put me down for right now, but hold you know I'm gonna get those later. All right, cool. All right, everybody, okay, gotcha. good. That's what I like to see. Statman, you wanna you can come to yeah me yeah no of course. But I, I need my own separate from Statman's though. All right, just so y'all know. All right. Sep what? <laughs> yeah no that won't be there. That will not. This is gonna be burned after the after this uh, episode of the show. Seem really weird with that red sack. I, I don't like it. I don't feel right when I whenever I wear this hat, it's like I feel bad. It's like something is taking over me. It's like it's, a, it's, it's just horrible that we're on a, yeah. a, a panel of all yeah, Yankee yeah. fans and that's you had to lose shop for I mean, that just makes it that much worse. Yeah. Like, it's like it's, it's, it's bad, and I know it. And I want to, you know what? Let me take this time. I want to apologize to the fans out there, especially if you just tuned in. I don't want you guys to think that. That I've lost my mind on the set of the show because you were the Red Sox hat. That's not the case. I lost shot for shot, and sometimes when you lose shot for shot, you have to wear team apparel from a team that you hate. So this is why I'm wearing this hat. But don't listen. I don't want you guys to see this, and then next week you don't tune into the show because you think that I didn't turn and switch sides and became a Red Sox fan. No. You know what? I'll I'll, I'll I'll let you off. I'll let you off the hook today. The kids right, are here. They, they don't want to look at it. I don't want to look at it. I'm going back to we're, Brooklyn. I'm going back now, to Brooklyn. Now you look all right, thanks, man. That, you know, that's all you I'm wondering, man. You should be proud man. of wearing a Red Sox thanks. hat. What? What's the, what? Get, 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 because... He lost his mic. He just well, lost his mic. For me, I believe you should be proud because, you know, one of, one of our Red Sox players got in, in, introduced to the Hall of Fame. 
It's just Pedro Martinez. Nobody cares. I mean, you know what? <laughs> I care. Dominican, Listen, Dominican. Dominican. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna let that one slide because Pedro Martinez's pet Nick quote is "The Yankees are my daddy." The, that's exactly so what I'm I was gonna, gonna slide for Pedro Martinez. Shout out to Pedro. You know, he definitely deserves. It. I thought he should have had an MVP um, as well, but you know they don't want to give it to pitchers all the time. But uh, shout out to, to, to Pedro. But the rest of the Red Sox. Oh yeah, Manny too. Actually, Manny was was uh, was one of my favorites and too. Manny. Even though he was juicing, but still. Yeah. Or oh, actually, I cannot, is it allegedly? Should I still say allegedly? Or was he actually juicing? He plays for the Red Sox. Who cares? He's a Red Sox. Right. Little man's got something to say over there. In Cooperstown, uh, Cooperstown, the Hall of Fame. I don't know if it was the the real baseball, but it had the first baseball that was F ever played in. I think. Oh, the first baseball ever used in the yeah. game. Yeah. Do you know which two teams used it? No clue. All right. <laughs> That's your homework. For the next time you come back on Real Fans Real Talk, I want to know the two teams that played in the first baseball game ever. They also had, like, back then, like, these screens. Not, not like, the screens, but they had these videos that um, you, sh you watch. But it was sort of, like, how they played it or, like, things that they did or like a trick because there was something that I didn't understand that I think it was like the bases but they, they the different rules when baseball was yeah, so it used young. to be it used to be when there was no umpire the um you actually call the um like a ball or a strike and they had the honor system back then that's, yeah. the that's right now one more, hold on one more time tell the people at home your name should I tell you? Go ahead, look at the camera and tell the people at home your name. Should I tell my last name too? Sure. Yeah. If you want to. My name, my name is Brandon Strix. All right, guys, if you're just right. joining us, my we're coming to you live with Trip Young, Statman, and Brandon, the newest host of Real Fans, Real Talk. We just put them on the panel. All right. If you're willing to accept the contractual offer right now, we want you to host he, the show. He, he, he's, he's too busy practicing to, uh, to play for the Yankees. So. Yeah. Well, Brandon, when you do make the Yankees, you do got my box seats for myself and Trip Young. Is that correct? You got us? Sure. Awesome. Right, cool. oh, okay. Awesome. Well, I, my full name is Brandon Hawkstrix, and I <laughs> they play, and my number is number two. Number two, all right, man. You, you, you managed to get Jeter's number? Uh, yeah. It's, did it's did, you, did, you, did you, was there a battle for that, or how, how, who, how was it determined that you got number no, two? I'm number two. No, I'm number two. You're on different teams. Oh, it's you're on ten you. Okay, you're on ten right. you. You're number so two. So both they're both number two. All right, all right. So both number twos. And then your position is. Yeah, I can play any base besides. For right now, catcher, third base, and first base. But I could probably play every position besides catcher when I grow up. All right, and then what position? I play almost every position besides first base. Okay, so you do play shortstop. Then both of y'all play shortstop. I could play. You could play shortstop. Have you played shortstop? Yeah. All right. So we got to go with the with, with the captain on that one. Shout out to Derek Jeter once again. And we got to shout out all of these USC Titans. Thank you guys again so much for coming on to the, to the set. It's a pleasure having you guys. Make sure you guys check us out, realfansrealtalk.com on the web. Also on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk. On Twitter and Instagram, at realfantalk. For myself, Trip Young, Mark the Statman, Skevich, all of the coaches, the USC Titans baseball team, thank you for coming. And we got to roll up out of here, man. We're going to see you guys next week. And y'all better support these kids. I mean that. Y'all better support these kids because... If we don't support the kids, who's going to support them? That's why we got to support them, all right? USC Titans, hashtag, hashtag that. See you on Twitter, hashtag USC Titans. Recognize who y'all dealing with. And I got to say hi, Mom, too. Cause, That's right, uh, hi, Mom, because everybody else did it, so we got to do it now, too. Bananas.